Okay, this is our second IEPPV live episode. If you have joined us live from the last one, you realize that there has only been a two week gap. That is because the beginning of the year is quite challenging for us and we had a bunch of things to push around. So what we're gonna be doing from here on out is we'll give ourselves and our guests a little bit of a gap, probably 30 days between uh, our next one. So that'll be nice for us. Uh, Pete and I were a little taken back. We're like, ah, it's so soon. But uh, it's always going to be on the, what is it, the second Tuesday of the month? Is that what we're doing here? <laughs> um, so what we have tonight is we have uh, a guest, John Powers, who's going to be talking about travel. We also have Peter Levshin, who many of you already know, who's traveled pretty much everywhere else in the world. So those two are going to be able to talk to each other. Um, you've got uh, Pete Rizak, who's the current president of PPC. He's going to be giving us an update and playing along with us today. And then myself, Troy Miller, uh, with SpicyJello.com. You can check me out anywhere. Um, with uh, Pete Rizak, Pete, uh, they can check you out at uh, PeteRizakPhotography.com or they can just go to Instagram is, what do we got here? P. Rizak. P. Rizak, yeah. <laughs> Pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. And John Powers, I, I, I kind of like what you've got. You've got applesauce photography dot zenfolio.com. Very, very clever there. And uh, Peter. Powers photography, but nobody could remember that. And the older <laughs> people, uh, before your time, Troy, would have thought, oh, John Robert Powers, the photography uh, model agency. And I said, no, no, no relation. So I needed a hook that people could remember. And Applesauce is easy to remember than John Powers. Yeah, good deal. Good deal. And then uh, Peter Levshin over there, we've got levoimagery.com. And uh, you guys can go check them out. I'll, I'll put some of that information in the show notes when we're done. So, so John Powers has traveled the world, right? You were, uh, as, I'm, as I see in your bio here, you're a U.S. Army, Army veteran, 38 years in the military, spent time in Kuwait, Japan, Vietnam. Uh, you've, you've been all over. And so that's, that's sort of what we're going to hear about today. Um, what I do want to show, which I think, is, I think is pretty cool here. Let me, let me jump in here and get to an image of, uh, of John's. So this is, the, this is one of your images. And I know, I think Pete, I think Peter already mentioned that uh, he knows where this is. Yep. Right. So this is the kind of stuff you're going to be talking about, right? This is what you're going to be sharing with us. Sure. Perfect. Perfect. So before Sorry. we get in, before we get into that, um, Pete, Mr. PPC president, would you care to, to let us know a little bit what's going on with PPC? And then I'm going to give a little bit of what's going on with IEPPV and then we'll get into the, into the program. Perfect. Well, we've got uh, our image competition dates uh, set up for this fall. It's going to be up in the Sacramento area this year, uh, October 11th. Uh, it's Friday, and we have got a venue secured on that. Uh, Jim Trapp has worked on that, so I don't remember the exact name of it, but he has located a, an area in Sacramento for us to have that. So we're excited to have that on the dates, and we'll start to see uh, information come out on that. And your Rebecca Lee from IEPPV, we're thrilled to have her as the chairperson again this year for our image comp. That's kind of about what I've got for sort of the, from the last two weeks of seeing you. So what, uh, uh, we've got that nailed down. What is uh, the PPC website if somebody wants to go check out more of that stuff? Uh, I think currently we're ppconline.com, but we are working on some things on that. But I believe that is the current website. Okay, very good, very good. And then at IEPPV, for those of you who are joining us from there, um, we have coming up on February 20th, we're going to have our model shoot at our regular location at the Piscetti Factory. And we're going to be bringing in a bunch of the models. Some, hopefully, we can get a couple of wasteland models, but we never know. So it's going to be myself, Freddie Sedano, and Nick Seth Smith. We're going to talk about different lighting situations. We're going to talk a little bit about video. Freddie's going to show how to do an interview in a live, noisy environment. That's going to be kind of cool. You guys can all do that as well. So if you have any questions, go to ieppv.com and check that out. 
Uh, new news today, for those of you who went to F64 Live last year, I have just booked the venue. So August 17th is when that's going to be happening. And uh, there's no information on the website at all. I mean, literally, I booked it like four hours ago. So <laughs> don't go looking for too much. All right. I think that's it for some of the announcements. So, uh, John, are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Ready let's. Time. We're going to we're going to we're going to jump right in with you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and let you let you take off for a little bit. I'm going to jump in with a little bit of uh, questions, Q and A, some a little bit of dialogue as we go. <clears throat> Any questions that might come through? So breathe often so I can I can sneak in. Okay. <laughs> no, no problem. And, and by the way, any of you jump in there, Peter, or please, as I'm talking, I, you know, the more the merrier. I, I, I'm not a, an expert per se. In fact, I was trying to look that up. What is travel photography? And I was thinking, you know, on the bio, travel, uh, expert travel photographer. And I said, you know what? How can you define what an expert is in travel photography? I, I don't know. There's no definitive line for that. I, I'm certainly an experienced travel photographer. So I, I, I really want to encourage people to get out there and see the world. Um, I, I just came across this quote. It was just yesterday. You know how you're going around and you hear something and it you just stop in your tracks? And it's attributed to Mark Twain. I don't know how true it is. But uh, it, and I'm paraphrasing on it here, but it, it basically says that um, for travel itself is a fatal. Uh, it's it, it, it's the cure for ignorance, basically, is what it is, uh, and, and bigotry and so forth. We got to get out there and see the world. And as photographers, there is so much to capture, and we each have our own disciplines. Uh, and the, the unique thing I like about travel photography is that there is, uh, you need to be a jack of all trades. There is no one set skill that you can have in travel photography. Uh, you can, uh, it's, a, it's a mixture of street photography, portraits, landscapes, and so forth. And you, and you need to be able to get out there and go. So I, I want to encourage people to, with, you know, 2.2 million people fly every day in just the United States alone. You know, it's, it's safe. Uh, it, 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 you need to get out there, but you got to use common sense. You know, I, I am not going to advocate backpacking in Afghanistan. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, use some common sense there. Um, uh, I, I'm bypassing Iran for the time being right now. Uh, not a smart move, but get out there. I, I focus basic, no pun intended, but I focus basically in Southeast Asia. Uh, I, my, my area is Japan. I was based out of Japan, but Vietnam, um, Cambodia, Thailand, Philippines, India, Burma, Myanmar, uh, all of that. That's where I travel and and do my my photography so i really want to encourage people to get out there uh and and don't be afraid what in fact what i would recommend is don't go alone whatever you do don't go alone i don't ever travel alone i always my own preference is i work with travel agencies and i i meet up with a guide the only country that i go to alone is because i lived there for 16 years is i go to japan all the time i'm there you, I, in fact if you want to go to japan let me know and i'll be glad to go with you uh i'll be there the first week of april because it's the cherry blossom season again and i'll be going to tokyo and probably out to kyoto i know some key spots there uh to take you uh, where i'm going at least uh and so, and we'll talk a little bit of it more about that, about doing homework, but uh, you get, a, get yourself a guide. There's a lot of tour agencies out there. What I do is I link up and I have guides that meet me and take me to key areas. Uh, it's not a smart move to be an individual going out there. And, and if you can get away from the, if it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium approach. That would be great. There's nothing more frustrating as a photographer is to be on a 40 passenger bus driving from point A to point B. And as you are driving, you're seeing all these magnificent sights 
that you can only see and they won't stop because you've got to get to some place before two o'clock so that you can get a picture of something else. That is so, so frustrating. Uh, the great things, I got examples of them, we'll get to it later probably. The great thing about having your own tour guide is you are in a vehicle there and you're driving and I can't tell you how many times I've said stop. And you just, they stop where they are and you get out and you just take all the pictures you want. Well, we're going to be a little late to get to, that's fine. I don't care. The main thing is to get the photo, you know, that we don't make it to a spot. And I don't hear that it was, this temple was built in 638 BC. I'm not going to be upset about that. I'm there to take the photos. I'm not there to master in history. I love history. So John. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. You're on a you're on a roll. So, you know, you're you're given all this really great advice and my my thought is like yeah. so if I'm going to be planning a trip, yeah. How do I how do I not encounter those problems that you're mentioning? How do I make sure I don't get stuck on a bus or how do I make sure that I get with a good tour guide? How do I do that? Number 1, first begin, where do you want to go? You need to do research, you know, do you want to go to Vietnam? What, what is the motivation for you to get out there? For instance, me, uh, I love monks. Uh, I, my camera sees an umbrella or a monk, and I'm <laughs> automatically going to be going there. And so I've done my homework, and I have found there are tons of monks, especially in places like, Cam well, yeah, right there. That, that was at Angkor Wat in Cambodia right there. Uh, right. So I, I have a question about this. I, I looked at this image and I, and I, and I wondered, I mean, it's, a, it's an, a, an amazing image. And I think what's wonderful about it is, is the good use of composition and all those kind of things that there's several of us that do image critiques on a regular basis. And I think that, you know, no matter where you go, uh, your, your ability to be able to see the scene is really important and know how to approach. But uh, what, what are all those holes in the pillars? Those holes there are remnants from, if you, if you remember in Cambodia, Pol Pot was, uh, took over the country in the early 70s and just turned the entire nation upside down. And uh, it, it, it was horrible, hor the killing fields of Cambodia, yeah. if you will. Uh, these are more different angles of Angkor Wat here. But those are remnants, those are from the battles that took place all over. Those are bullet wounds, uh, those are bullet wounds, but they're, they're shells and, and wow. bullet marks cool. from the revolution and, uh, back in the 70s. Uh, wow. And they're, you'll see them all over. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Killing Fields and so forth, but mm -hmm. the graphically goes into how the the people were the 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 leaders the scientists and so forth were were executed and a lot of them were trying to escape and they held up in places and they thought they could be safe in religious temples but as you can see they just attacked anywhere and just and decimated the nation so how do you how do you approach a shot like this? I mean, you're out, you're walking around. I'm assuming, I'm assuming yeah. that, that you're in some area. They're right. sitting there. I mean, is it okay for you just to photograph whoever you want, or is this taken from a distance, or how, how does that work? How do you how do you get a shot like this? For me, most of my shots are with my seventy to two hundred. I'm always at a distance back, giving people that that space of of respect, if you will. Um, if I approach an individual, I would, if they're close enough, I will give eye contact. All I have to do is lift up my camera and, and nod, and they will 90% of the time say, yeah, no problem, and you just take the picture. Um, it's so different here in the United States. I have tons of pictures, especially like in Japan, where of children. Uh, taking pictures of children. I get the eyeball of the parents and then 90% of the time say, sure, sure, no problem. Here in the United States, if you walk around and say, hey, I want to take a picture of your kid, they think you're a pervert. Uh, and 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 you got to be really, really careful. I just, I don't. But um, most of the times walking around, taking photos of people, it's an expected part of Southeast Asia. There's so many tourists there throughout Asia, walking around, Taking a photo of people is a common occurrence, unlike what we have here in the United States. You know, this this also was in Cambodia. I walked by a monastery where young, uh, they're called novice monks, were just hanging out, and I just pointed the camera, 
and he just looked at me. This is a classic shot where I stopped the car. We were driving along, going from point A to point B, and I just told the driver, stop. And we got out, and I, and I went ahead of the group as they were walking by. There, this is a morning shot. Every morning they would go out to, you can see the baskets in their hands, to collect the rice alms and so forth. And I just waited. I just, okay, they're going to walk by, and I just, boom. Got the shot. You could not on a tour, and tour buses were going by. He, you, they they cannot stop and get the shot. And that's the great thing about uh, as being in a tour uh, in a where you what you do is go online and, and type in a country. Type type in tours. You can type in individual tours, uh, and these agencies will pop up and say they you know private tour and you name a country and you will get all these agents. I'll keep my hands down. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> no, no. So, so I have a, I have a couple questions for you. So, so Peter, you've been, you've been in these locations, right? Like you've been to, you've been to some of these particular areas with the, with the yeah. novice monks. And, yeah. Well, and, I, I just want to, I just want to add what he said about um, the travel. I completely agree. 110%. A good travel photographer goes on a trip and gets a tour guide and make sure the security and make sure the health and everything else is in place. And if you're successful and you come back and you didn't get hurt or you didn't get sick and you've got 30, 40, 50 great images, that is a successful trip. And typically so, well, exactly what mm -hmm. John was saying, there's so much that goes by that if you're on a bus, you're going to kill yourself because you will see such magnificent things that you'll know you'll never see again. And that's why a tour guide is is what you need. Okay. Absolutely. So what what is a what is a personal tour guide cost? What what should somebody expect to pay if you're going to go to a, a Burma or a, a China area, right? And you're going to go photograph things like this. What would you expect to pay for two weeks? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Either one. You guys have both. You guys have both okay. done it. I mean, I'd love to hear. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll just jump in. A tour guide. I mean, Burma is expensive. Uh, we had uh, the best tour guide there, Win Kazan. And an individual, you'd pay between eight and twelve thousand dollars for two weeks, and that includes all your accommodation, all your food, and trips around inside the country, and some of the best photography you'll ever do. Now, again, it depends on how many people are traveling. And in John's case, if he's like one or two people, then it can might get a little bit more expensive. But again, um, you know, you do your homework. And then you get a relationship and you start talking to these people like John is fantastic around, you know, Japan. I mean, Japan's a pain in the ass to get around because if you don't speak Japanese, the signage around there is horrible. It, it, you know, so John, what, what on, on an event like this, I mean, on a tour like this, what are, what are you expecting to pay when you're planning your trip? What, what, what part of your budget are you expecting to pay for your tour guide? Um, Again, it varies on, on how qualified the tour guide is and how competent he is to set up shots or go to temples when the sun is in the right direction and all of those things. And make sure you do not get into trouble, okay, because you can get into trouble quite easily in some of these countries. Uh, Cambodia, for example, Angkor Wat, they, they have no restrictions on how many tourists go there and they sell as many tickets as they can. So you've got millions of people trampling around one of the most beautiful archaeological sites in the world and it's falling apart. So the problem is, is to get off the beaten track. Again, it depends. Um, anything from five to $10,000, something like that. Uh, you can do it on a budget but it depends on how adventurous you are and what you eat. John? Yeah, I agree with that. And your guide, if he's good, for instance, I was in Burma in November, or Mi Myanmar uh, in November, and some beggars were by the side of the road, and I, and I loved capturing people. And I started to, to photograph the beggar. My guide came over quickly and said, please stop. And I said, why, what's, what's going on? He says, we do not, and he was speaking for the government when the, that third person ate. Yeah. We do not want you to take pictures of our poor section of, yeah. of the area here. And it's the yeah. first time that I had been stopped and taking a photo. And of course, I respected that. And I realized that they're just controlling the image that they send out about their country. Yeah. You go yeah. to India, I, you shoot beggars all the time. Yeah. Um, 
but China, you know. China, yeah, China's like that too. China is very anti showing anything that looks, you know, poor, you know, somebody begging for money, somebody with one leg hopping around, whatever. The Chinese get very out of control with that and they're getting much worse. Okay. Um, in, in Burma, in Burma, they only want the outside world to see all the rosy good things right. and how wonderful they are. They don't want to see the Rohingyas getting raped and murdered. Right, right. You, okay. So when you, when you travel, you have to be culturally aware of what is appropriate for you to do and what yeah. is not. Now I know that, I know and that that's John's, where a good guide comes in. That guide stopped me from getting in trouble with the police. Yeah, uh, right. so okay. that, that's a key. So I know you have some links in here, John, that I'm going to, I'll start throwing them into the chat uh, for some of your travel preparations and things like that. So well, let's, so I've got a question for you guys. So when you mentioned the, the police or the government, do, do they want to see your pictures before you leave the country then? Or how does that, how does that go? I have not had that experience. Uh, I was concerned, for instance, going into Burma in November with the problems that they have been having with uh, with things, and they had to, you know, when you put down your occupant, uh, your occupancy, you know, what's your job? I wrote down their photographer, and I thought, boy, are they going to? But they wanted a list of where you are going. What city, all the cities you were going to. So I wasn't going in any area where the Rohingya w were. Yeah. So I, I guess it was no problem being a photographer. So I had no problems. I know I have been in, in some areas where I know I'm being watched. I did not get that in Burma per se, but I've never had them check my photos. What have you, I, I did have that on a US military base. Uh, they, yeah, being military, you know, uh, I went to a, a base where my son was born 13 years before, and I'm showing him taking pictures where you were born. And I had the MP stop me, and they confiscated my camera and mailed it back to me a week later. They had to check to make sure I wasn't you know, doing anything. They didn't want me taking photos of the installation. I said, it's a building, a hospital, that's all. No, no, but so let's, we're going to move, let's, let's keep moving. Sorry. Okay. Um, so you've got in here, uh, so what, what are some of the disciplines that are important to you as you're shooting? Like you're, you're walking around, like there's going to be, there's going to be photojournalism, there's going to be portrait, uh, there's going to be just, uh, uh, travel photography, if you will. There's just going to be sort of, oh, this is a cool candid moment. I, I want to remember I was here. So for somebody who's planning a trip, like, like as a photographer, I want to take every piece of equipment I own, oh, right? No, no. Yeah, because yeah. because I don't want to not have my 400 millimeter. What if I need that? Yeah, I flew so, so the question is, and I met a couple of other photographers there for a workshop, and there was this one guy. God bless him. He had his camera bag. He had a foot locker that he was dragging himself with video cameras and all that and lights and all of that. And we were going from point to point to point and it was cumbersome. It was difficult. I, my policy is go light. You need to anticipate what you want to shoot and what kind of photography you want to shoot. I'm not that much into night photography per se. I, I, I do my shooting in the early morning, late afternoon, and then I get back to the hotel. I just, I'm, you know, at my so what's age. your gear list look like? What kind of body are you taking? I, I carry, level? like to Burma, I had two, I had two bodies with me. Uh, I, I like to have, if possible, two bodies. Um, I shoot Canon for what it's worth, but I have a telephoto and a wide angle and two bodies with me. Um, and, and that is basically it. Uh, of course, I, I carry a charger with me. You have a lot of uh, uh, cards with you um, and also a card reader so that you can back up your, your cards as right. well. It's always important to back up your material. But so for shooting, you're, you're going very light, very minimal very button light. amount of lenses. Okay. Right. Yeah, so you half need... the time I don't even carry a tripod with me. I know that's blasphemy for some people. Uh, and I can understand that. Uh, I'm going to India next month. I've got a tripod. I'm, I've got a little travel tripod I'm taking with me definitely. Uh, cause I want some evening shots of the Taj Mahal. I have some late afternoon and all that, but I want some night shots. Uh, so anyway, um, but I, 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 I'm, if I can't fit it in my travel bag, it doesn't go.
I, so I've when got- you're when you're headed out before you leave, do you have it in your mind that I'm going to go to this location and this is the type of work that I want to create when I get there, or do you just like to put yourself in an environment and just find what's there? Both. I have key things that I need and want to shoot. Uh, people is what I'm going for most of the time. Uh, iconic sites like the Taj Mahal are nice. You take the shot and I want to move on. But I'm more interested in people. That's me. Other people are more interested in the floral or, or the uh, um, some of the cultural other backgrounds, the festivals and so forth. And that's nice. You, you need to understand what your own desire is. Uh, if you're going for the first time to a country, sure, get the key shots, you know, get the picture of the Taj Mahal, uh, get the picture of Mount Fuji in Japan and that kind of the giant Buddha and that kind of stuff. But what is it that you, you need to decide what you're going for? Why? That's part of the homework. And then you need to make sure that you're going to get to those reasons, those times at the right time. I'm going to shoot. I was, my thing is I'm going to India next month. And then I was coming back and I said, wait a minute, cherry blossom time. I'm going to be flying right over Japan. You idiot. Stop over there and spend a week there. And so I've got it worked out where I'm going to be as well because I've done my homework. I know what to look for and where to go. So, so when you're when you're planning this and you're going to go, you know, the cherry blossoms and, and, and a lot of the locations around the world, doesn't really matter whether it's U.S. Or, or another country, these are places other people have been, right? Like they've, they've photographed the Taj Mahal, they've photographed the monks. So what, kind, what advice would you give to somebody so that when they go there, that they're going to be able to get something that's unique? You know, it's nice to go to somebody else's tripod holes. But how do you make that shot you need start, you? start there. Get that shot out of the way because it'll hang over you. Get, do, the, do your homework. Now that we have the internet, you can go Google an image and you get on Google a bunch of different photos of that same. Let's just take the Taj Mahal. You, you can boom. You can take the, take the standard shot, but then start walking around. Uh, when I was at the Taj Mahal the last time, uh, I was amazed as you walked around it through different arches, different things. There were different views that you never see before. Explore. The, the serendipitous moments are sometimes the best. Get the shots. Do your homework on what you want to do. You can get on the internet and see photos all the time. When I'm out shooting, one of the things that I do is I am... I know where I want to shoot from, but then I look at other people shooting. I know, and, I, and I'm looking for that individual off by himself. I am always looking to see where lenses are pointed because some people are finding things that you never seen before. It's so neat to go on a shoot with six other people and you go to one location and then you go back and you all share the photos and everybody's got a different person. I didn't see that. Watch so- photographers. So does the uh, does the tour guide often help you find those some good locations? Guide. Some some individual tour guides they've been there a thousand times and they'll say here's the shot that you really want. I had that uh, in this last trip I was at. He took me right to a spot and he says this is what you want. And sure enough, there was the the uh, temple and it was reflected in this pool of water. <laughs> I would not have seen. That's nice and got the shot and I said thank you and I and I took it. But then I went off by myself. And I like to explore different angles and so forth. Get the standard shot and then watch what other people are shooting and then wander off by yourself. And that's a great thing. If you're in a tour group, you've got to stay with the group. And if you wander off, you got to make sure to get back. When you are with a tour guide by yourself, you can every time I'm saying, I'm going over here. And they, they'll follow you and so forth. And well, Let's... Uh... Let's shift right. gears a little bit and let's look at some of your images. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Let's, uh, I know that you've got, uh, I know they got some, some there queued up and okay. uh, you can go ahead and share your screen and let's go through a handful of those. All right. I know, uh, yeah, we've got some, some questions over here. So as you're doing that, uh, Stan is asking about drones in other okay. countries. Um, I know that I did some research for Peter and every country has their own rules. So right. there's actually, I don't have the website in hand, but, uh, but uh, you can do some research and there literally there's, there's rules. When Peter went to Papua New Guinea, you could fly it on one side, but you couldn't fly it on the other side of the island, you know? So 
Okay. Uh, I've, in my experience, I'm seeing more and more signs now that say no drones, no drones. Uh, I, I've been surprised about that. Uh, as I move around, they are becoming proactive, but in the negative sense of, of and so I don't, it, and for me, a drone is very difficult. It's, it's bulky. It's, it's more stuff to carry than I want. I'm a minimalist. If I can't, hand carry it with me through the airport. I'm not taking it with me. Um, so I, drones are not an issue with me. They, right. they, it's very frustrating. What was it? Last summer, I was in Kyoto for the largest festival in, in Japan. The, Japan has 300,000 festivals a year. Uh, it, it, you can, there are 6,000 festivals at any one time on the weekend. So there, Japan is incredible to photograph. But you, you, I went there and I'm taking photos, and there was a sign, you, I didn't even get to the crowd. No drones, no drones. And it's like, oh, if I had carried that with me all that way, that would have been so frustrating. Right, so, right. I'm, so I can't really address the drone issue. I just know that it's a inconvenience, encumbering, and, so tell me about this image that we have up here. Oh, okay. What I did, here's, here's something I think is real important for, um, um, and I'll just go through a bunch of them. When you're out taking photos as a travel photographer, one of the things I'm looking for is emotion. I am looking for capturing emotion because we collect, we, we connect with emotion. If, if you're capturing the people, nothing connects you better than seeing emotions on people. The joy, this little kid's having a great time with, at a parade there. I, this, this guy does not want his photo taken with his girlfriend there. Uh, it's a, and you connect, it says, wow, I'll remember that. Here's, here's a, a, an awe as she's watching at a festival. And here's one with confidence. And I talk about attitude. This was in India. She uh, just evoking attitude. And you can see the exuberance. Uh, and, and you just, when you're showing photos uh, from the travels, you're sharing these photos. You want photos in which people connect, and we connect through emotion. Uh, and, and nothing connects us better than emotion. Uh, and so that's, you know, I, I, so I'm always looking for emotion. Uh, so there, that's, there's some emotion photos for you. That's something I'm always looking for. Uh, how, is, I don't know if that kind of answers your question. No, that's great. No, that's, that's awesome. So um, I, know, I also know that in your, in your uh, collection of images that you were showing me the other day, you've got some, you've got some wonderful landscape uh, work going on in there. And we have coming up in a few, what is it, uh, in March, we're going to have a big landscape event out in Moab. And of course, we're not traveling to uh, Asia or someplace like that. <laughs> but, you know, the idea of, of seeing something that might be iconic or because you can approach those shots no matter where you are, is, you know, looking uh -huh. at the environment, looking at how you might see something different. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be that nice where we're going. But <laughs> yeah, like here, here's some iconic shots, you know, uh, this, you know, get the standard, get, you get your standard Taj Mahal shot. And Don't you have reservations to go there now, or hasn't it been blocked somehow, the, to Taj Mahal to photograph there? I thought it's been limited. No, not, not, no, I'm going next month. I'll be in Agra next month uh, and, and uh, on a workshop there with eight other photographers. And oh, cool. they've got things so, Hey, Troy, can I jump in for a sec? Um, John. Yeah. Um, I shoot Sony, okay, and one of the things that's always, always annoyed me is when you go to these iconic, you know, buildings and places, all the people that you have to deal with. Yeah. Um, I've been using um, the Sony mirrorless, and they have an app that they have where it takes 256 photos, puts them all together, and anything that moves gets deleted. Oh, and yeah. Works extremely well, but you have to have a little bit of patience, and it takes a little bit to work with. Right. But for things like this, especially with, you know, the previous shot that you had, you know, you can remove those people in, in Photoshop, but it's a lot of work, enormous amount of work. And to have all the people that move deleted is fabulous. It's yeah. Fabulous. I know that in Elements, they have a, a, um, an app that works on that as well. I, I, don't, I don't have that, obviously. 
uh, and that that would be a nice feature. Yeah, uh, I'm moving around so much that I I don't know if I can stay still that long. <laughs> Here here's like for instance here's the iconic shot of the Taj Mahal. Here's walking around. Here's another kind of interesting view. But my favorite shot at the Taj Mahal was this one. I right. like. You know, I, I I saw the three kids, and it's funny in India. It happens in a lot, but especially in India, they come up to you, take my picture, take my picture, okay? I take the picture, and then they walk away. They don't want to see it on the viewfinder. Some of them do, and so forth. They just hey, take my picture, and these three boys walked up and said, "Take my picture," <laughs> and I said, "Okay," and then before I even snapped, the middle guy grabbed his two buddies, and you know, here we are, and I. That's a candid shot there, and I loved it. I loved so, it. So, John, so uh, <laughs> you go out there, and let, let's leave that image up there for just a second. So, you go out and you shoot. Oh, no, go back to, to your landscape. That was the, the horizontal. Okay, go back um, there. Go back to it there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so what, what, uh, what does your workflow process look like? So, you come back, you got all your data, you're sitting at your desk, you've uploaded everything. What, uh, what software are you using? And, and uh, why, I, why are you using this? So what's your workflow look like? Yeah, okay, is Photoshop is what I use. That's the only thing that, that I use. And, and the first thing that I do, actually the photos actually go into iPhoto in, on my Mac here because they a big screen and so forth. First thing I do is I weed out all the obvious deletes. I don't delete anything in the camera when I'm out in the field. Um, I, I have learn the hard way. I'll look at an image on the back of my camera and I'll, oh, that's a terrible picture. I'll do, and I get, don't get around to it. And I get home and I says, oh yeah, I was going to delete that. And it pops up and it's a totally different look. Uh, so I don't delete anything till I get home. First thing I do is I go through and I just delete all the obvious ones. So I get all of those out of the way. And then I just go through and it's very subjective. Uh, okay, I like this, I like that, and I just put them into a folder, and I then determine which ones I'm going to work on. Um, again, it's subjective. Uh, somehow I lost that, sorry. No, I turned it off, yeah. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we can see you talking. Oh, yeah, you're not missing anything. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I, I delete, get rid of all of those, then I just pick out the ones that really pop. Uh, you know, I'll have a thousand images and I'll wind up, usually it's about a 10% and I'll work on a hundred of them. And then out of that hundred, then I'll, uh, then out of that, I'll, I'll come down to, um, a good 20, 30 that really stand out. Okay. I got it. So, so I guess, uh, uh this is more of a, uh, of a photographic uh, ethical question, if you will. Um, do you feel that it's appropriate to, to add or subtract uh, sub, you know, items within your image? I mean, are you okay not with yeah, dropping no, those clouds in like or that. taking it's those clouds like out? photojournalism almost, uh, almost. I, I'll go in there and I'll enhance the photo. I'll take out things of, if there's too many people in this photo, so forth, but I won't add anything to it because a lot of the shots like this at Angkor Wat, this is an iconic scene. Uh, if, if I was to add something, uh, it, it would be, I don't, I don't, that's just. I mean, if there were no clouds in this scene, would you be okay adding those clouds? Would that bother oh, you? No, I don't do that. I, 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 I don't have a problem with that. I just okay. don't do that myself. Well, the lake, Troy, the lake is full of trash. Okay, there's empty bottles, plastic, everything floating around in this lake because right. they throw everything in there. So one of the things you have to do is yeah. delete all the thank, crap thank in you, the lake. You're right. <laughs> I, and I probably did that on this. I yeah. took quite Good a while. <laughs> but I probably went in there and I took out, I will take out papers. You're absolutely yeah. right. Okay. You take out things that just don't really belong there. But I won't change the structure itself. Oh, no, but I mean, adding clouds or, or you know, uh, I, cleaning that stuff up. So, I don't have a problem with that myself. I just don't do it personally. Right. So we, we had a question about, uh, do you have any tips? And this can be for John. I'd like to hear from you first, if you will, and then Peter. But when you're approaching people, and, and obviously these people are walking, I couldn't find very quickly somebody uh, that you would approach. But if you were to approach somebody and you want to photograph them, there's a language barrier. So how do you how do you overcome that language barrier? I mean, do you like you said you just lift the camera up and if they if they give you a no, 
And as I say, 90% of my shots are with that 7200. It's a long, and I have the, the lens hood on it as well. I stand out very conspicuously as a professional photographer. So when I have the camera and I point it at them and I look at them, they will either, get, they will, through body language, it will be yes or no, or in some countries, it's an automatically, okay, one American dollar, please. <laughs> and, and, and so, uh, but that, that's, it's communicated through the eyes and through Got the, gesture of the camera. It. And it's so, never been an issue. So Peter, for you, um, this is, this is, I had to bring this up because this is one of my, one of yeah. my favorite images of Peter's. I'll let him explain it say, this is an idea, in brief okay. detail. But okay. Peter, is that, is that true? Is that, I mean, how do you approach people on the street? Because I know you, yeah. I know you like to do that too. Well, the thing is you have to be very, very careful and you have to be very, very sensitive depending on where you are, obviously. And if you use really good, gracious behavior and smile and become very non-threatening and playful and hand the kids a little candy or a little something or whatever, um, I object to the, you know, pay for the photos. That's annoying to me. Um, you know, uh, taking pictures of monks in Thailand is almost impossible. They do not want you taking their photo. They will run away. But in Burma and Cambodia and other places, if you approach them respectfully, and if they say no, you just walk away. But most of the time, they will absolutely pose for you, hang out, whatever. And I think it comes down to attitude. If you show a very good attitude and respect, then I think you can get, you can get almost anything you want. People are, are happy to oblige. So, I can't tell you how much my smile, I don't mean to boast, but my smile has gotten me through so many yeah. doors. Uh, it, you just, they can sense happiness, uh, respect. Yeah. And that's a key, Peter, you're right. That yeah. respect, you walk yes. in there, and if you just walk in and just start shooting, there's, there's an automatic door closing right yeah. there. And they, look, and the Japanese tourists and, sorry, not, not Japanese photographers and Chinese photographers are the worst on the world. They think that everybody owes them and they will go in and bully their way around. Now, this photo, for example, the guy's taking a pee in the corner. Okay, it's a hairdressing place. And after he, I took the photo, I said what I did, and I said it was all right. They just started laughing because the guy taking a pee in the corner, it was just, you know, what are you going to do? You have to go, you have to go. <laughs> that's, just, that's just one of my favorite photos. That's in Yangon, Yangon, on the back streets of Yangon. So, uh -huh. so you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about, uh, you know, a little bit about the travel, a little bit about the etiquette when you're there. Let's, let's talk a little bit about just the art. Right, just the art of creating an image, you know, the coming back with an image that really makes you feel like this was a place that I want to go back to. Um, and, and so when you're there shooting, you put aside all of the rushing and all of the travel and all of the, the hustle and bustle. I mean, do you find time that, that you're just sort of not to be too esoteric, but are you at peace with like, oh, this is so beautiful. I'm so glad I'm here. Or are you just like, I got to shoot the sun setting. I got three minutes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would say 80% of the time it's that I've got to shoot. Okay. I've got to get the right angle. Well, what? And I can't tell you patience is the key element that you need. You are waiting. That's why I love traveling alone. My wife doesn't even go with me or anything like that. I travel alone because I can't tell you how many times I've had people with me going, well, are you done yet? You're just standing there. And, you know, I will stand for 15, 20, an hour, a half hour, I should say, waiting for that moment uh, to get the shot. It takes patience uh, to do that. And most people don't have that if they don't, if they don't know what you're doing. So that's for me, a key there 20% uh, of the time I will be able to say, wow, I can't believe that I am here. Um, it's usually at night as I'm reflecting back that I get that, wow, this is so cool. But during the day, I am so focused, and that's shameful on me. That's why I say 80% of the time. I am so focused. Am I in the right place? Where, where is, I'm always looking for a better angle. Uh, is this, a, oh, man, I should be back. I've done my homework. I know where the sun is supposed to be. You know, where'd that cloud come from? You know, and so forth. 
But uh, so for me, 80% of it is go, go, go. It's work. It's, I'm, I am working. Um, so I don't know about you, Peter. Uh, oh, and look, you're, you're embarrassing me because I'm like 98%. And now that Troy has helped me with, with my photography, I would take uh, nighttime shots, star trails, Milky Ways, mm -hmm. then get up early in the morning, take early morning shots. And then during the middle of the day, I get out my infrared camera and mm -hmm. take infrared shots during the day because you don't want to waste that. And right. then you have the nighttime shots again. And then you do it again over and over. After three, four, five days, it's like, I need to go and rest somewhere else. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. You're going to be there. You spent, you know, 10 grand to get somewhere. You want to take as many and have good photos. You can always sleep when you get back home. Nice. Right. So let's shift gears a little bit from the photography aspect of it is that uh, I know that John, that you're working on a book. Yes. Right. You're working on your, on your first book. Could you tell us a little bit about that journey? Um, you know, I, I, I realize that there's a lot of work that goes into that and Peter just happens to be an expert <laughs> on creating books. Okay. Uh, but I, I mean, you know, from, from the layman's point of view, you know, there's a lot of us that create art, we create things and man, we would sure love to have our own book, right? Like, so tell me, tell me a little bit about what that journey is like and if there's part any tips you could me, offer the people out there. Part of for me is luck. Um, I, I had, I, you, you get out and you share your images as often as possible. Uh, I have my images on my iPad and so forth. And the key, the key, the key is networking. It is connecting with people because although you may not know somebody in the publishing world, if you know somebody who knows somebody that is in the publishing world. And for me, PPA was the way that this worked. I was in Nashville last year sharing my images with somebody and they said, oh, these are, are fantastic. Uh, are you thinking of publishing? I said, yeah, I'd like it. I said, let me show these images. I know somebody that might be interested. They looked at it and they said, you know what? I know a publisher. This is I, it showed a person who showed a person who showed a person and that person said, yeah, we would like to publish your work. And so I thought they were going to publish and they went up my book on Japan and they said, we love your style and all that, but what do you have on Vietnam? And I, well, I do have images on that. And I, they, and the, you, you need to be able to respond immediately. That's what building up portfolio is. I've got literally a hundred, 200, quality photos of any of those countries that I can produce at any moment's time. And they wanted to say, can you share 150 images of Vietnam this week? Yes, I can. And I sent those off and they said, this is what we want. So we've been working on it for the last six, eight months. Um, and it, the book comes out in, uh, in May. Um, and it's, it's a simple little book, but it's going through Vietnam from the north up by China down and just coming all the way down images all the way down and I'm just sharing the images and I just share a little bit from a photographer's perspective of what uh, you know what lens I used and so forth and what, what I was thinking you know where the sun is and that kind of stuff oh, so, very good very good so if you if 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 you could go to any other location, now you said, you, you know, Japan is your favorite place, but we're going to oh. take Japan out of it. Okay. Cause that was your favorite. Like, like where, where would you go? If you could just be there, if you could walk out your door and I like, Oh, I love photographing sunsets here or I love for like where like top three places that you would go. Cause somebody right now is thinking like, I'm going to go travel. I don't know where to go. I, where I'm going next month, India, uh, India, India. It, it is a poor, desolate, desperate, country heartbreaking but the images there are incredible um you you can travel i have only been through the northern areas from varanasi through jaipur and agra to new delhi and so forth but everywhere you turn the colors the vibrant colors of the clothing and the people are are amazing varanasi is my favorite city on the ganges there but do not go on the water it's a whole nother story there <laughs> but, you, know, you need to go but you need to be prepared i just was uh, <laughs> i just uh, I saw my doctor today i got my malaria pills and i got my typhoid pills and I, I'm good to go. You oh, jeez. You do your homework. Um, 
for any place that you're going to go, especially if you've never been there before. But India would be the top of the, uh, would be the top definitely. So we have a we have a question that's been posted by uh, Frederick friend Johnson, and he asks, uh, do you research the areas you're visiting and then arrive with a, def a definite shoot list, or do you allow serendipity to just kind of take over? Both. you got to have both. If you just stay to your list, you're going to miss so much, so much that was unexpected. But have some key things in each area. Just don't show up to an area and say, well, what do you got here? Because you will miss so much. Do your homework. We're in this age of the 21st century with the internet, you just Google in any item and they will have photos and information. You don't need to know that this temple was constructed in 23 AD and, and that this king lived there and so forth. Yeah, these were shot in Varanasi right here. Uh, it, oh, it says there in the corner of our <laughs> I figured I would show oh, some right. of your India. Oh, oh, right. you're telling yeah, your story. <laughs> Yeah. I Those mean, were, you know, why not? Why not? We and, and you have the see, technology. Yeah, the the it's just the, just the vibrancy there in Jaipur there. Uh, yeah, it's just the, you know this is a come hither. I love this shot here. I took this one. You think she's being very quiet? She was actually very shy and said, "Do you want to take my picture?" Click, and I took it like that and caught her. Looks like it's a like I call a come hither, and you know you you never know what you're going to get. So it, there's oh, just so great. much there. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. I'll be going back. You know, Agra is where the Taj Mahal is. People think, oh, that you can see the Taj Mahal. There's just, this is at the Taj Mahal, but you never see this. Uh, there, there's so much to see uh, in, in, in there. How long are you going to spend in India, John? Just two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. I'm on a workshop. Uh, this time, before I went with another another guy, a school teacher and I, and we had our, our guide, and he took us to these spots. But this time, I'm going with a workshop, and there's six other photographers being led by a photographer, and he has hired models and so forth <coughs> to... Yeah. To shoot and all that kind of stuff, so I'm I'm excited. And we're going to the Holly Festival, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> which I'm really excited about. I have not been to the Holly Festival, which is so colorful. It gets very messy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've been. Excuse me, let me get a drink. Um, yeah, you need a lot of um, stuff to cover all your camera equipment up, and make sure you wear wraparound glasses for your glasses because yep. if you get that paint in your eyes, it it stings like hell. It's horrible. That's and horrible. I've got clothes that are going to be thrown away afterwards yeah. Yeah. and that kind of stuff. And then we've got, uh, through Think Tank, we have covers for the camera with the plastic so you can see, yeah. but keep it all protected. Because with all that dye that's going oh. on and everything, it's going to be <laughs> horrible. But the, the images should be fabulous. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Good. Uh, so I'm I'm sorry, Troy, but yes, India number one. No no question. About <laughs> the original question. <laughs> no, that's great. That's I'm, great. Hey, so John, sorry, sorry, Troy. Hey, John, what about the food there? Um, you've got to be so careful with the food. The food yes. can really get you badly in India. Yeah, I I and I have a weak stomach, so and I I always ask for the very mild very mild and it's always occurred. So I, I stock up on the naan. I love, yep. I didn't realize there were so many different kinds of naan. So I, I eat a lot of naan and very, very little of the meat and sauce. Yep. And bottled water, bottled and water. Nothing but bottled water. And do you clean person. your teeth with bottled water, do everything with bottled water. And don't use the sink for anything internally <laughs> whatsoever. Yep. So yep. John, have you, uh, have you been to Africa? We have, uh, no, no, just, no? just, just Cairo in northern Egypt up there. Uh, that's the only part of Africa I have been to. I mean, hey, Troy, John and I are going to go to Africa next year. There you, go. <laughs> you guys have fun. In the plains of Serengeti. Yeah, we're going. We'll go with John and take there Troy. I'm, I'm <laughs> I, uh, I recently had a good friend of mine who traveled there, traveled on her own. Um, <laughs> she, took some, she took some tours and she absolutely loved it. Got to go hang out with the gorillas. And I mean, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, always need to go to the Serengeti Plains. Yeah, she had a, she had a wonderful time. So I have not been there. So I I, I am not a world traveler for those. You're of my invited. No, you're I don't. Invited. <laughs> like, hey, you're you're invited. I'm not I've going been all over Europe as well. I've lived for four years in Italy and three years in Germany. So I've traveled extensively through Europe. But 
I just have an affinity for Southeast Asia, and I just love getting out there, uh, out and away from the tours. When I go to Thailand, you have to land in Bangkok, and then I get out of there. I go up to Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, and all of those areas up there, and, and that's where the real photography is. Well, yeah, like Southeast Asia is much more exciting than Europe. Europe's old, boring, you know, <laughs> schnitzels and some beer and, you know, so, old so, buildings. Who cares? So for, for, for somebody who's a new traveler, okay, yeah. not, not me, I'm, I'm like even, even, I'm more of a noob, okay. Yeah. But it's, for somebody who's a new traveler that wants to take an experience and go to a country that, that has a little bit of a culture difference yeah. um, than yeah. what they're used to, but has some Start good photographic England. opportunities. Start Where it's a foreign country, but you can understand what they're saying. Where? <laughs> and then once you get a feel of being in a foreign country, then get out. Uh, so but, where would you go? Uh, if, if somebody had never left the United States and they had no idea about a foreign country, I would recommend something like Great Britain, where it's foreign enough to be different, but you can kind of understand their English is different than ours. <laughs> <laughs> but you, that is a bread hit. <laughs> Oops, yes, there you go. Or Australia uh, would be another choice. I haven't been to Australia yet. My wife was there and she absolutely loved it, but I just haven't made it there. Um, so, you know, England or Australia, I would recommend for a very first time overseas and you have great trepidation. But once you get there and get out there and see how much fun it is, then I would venture out into other countries, depending on your taste. Like me and, I, and again, Peter, we love Southeast Asia. There's to us, it's more exciting and different. But somebody who loves Western civilization, as I said, I lived for four years in Italy. Oh, the Renaissance. I love the Renaissance. I have spent so much time in Florence and then down to Rome and so forth like that. So much to see, so much to take in. Uh, so it depends on your personal tastes. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of places to go where you don't have to go dive deep into Burma oh, no, or, exactly. you know, yeah, okay, got it. All right, so. And I we get, with Europe and then go into Asia. We're getting some recommendations in the chat, you know, like Iceland and Ireland. Yeah, Iceland's good. Yeah, like there you go. yeah, yeah. Pete, you've been, you've been quiet through this whole thing, all nice. I mean, have you, have you traveled out of the country? Do you have a favorite, uh, you know, destination? Tijuana. <laughs> That's pretty foreign, yeah. Yeah. You go to Santa Ana, same thing. I haven't. I've uh, I've been fortunate to go to Canada and Mexico. And that's pretty much it. I am not really uh, world travelish. And of course, I like I told you, I just was in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but that, you know, depends on where you're from. That's very foreign. I mean, I you know, I live in I live in Southern California, but I got I got family that's in the Midwest, you know, they're farmers in Northeast Indiana. So that can be quite foreign for somebody who's not used to going there, you know, especially in February. And yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, definitely. In February. <laughs> so uh, we're starting to come to the end of the hour. And uh, what I'd like to do is, um, you know, get, just get a last minute comment. We're going to end with you, John. So, so Pete, uh, what, you know, do you have anything that you want to end on? Anything you want to suggestions uh, from the t conversations that we've had, or anything? Oh, I think this was just a fantastic and and uh, conversation and very intriguing. I uh, and, and seeing the imagery is is just phenomenal. I mean, I feel like I was been there. So thank you so much for sharing your your experiences and your journeys with us, John. Yes, thank you, John. Uh, Peter, I know I know you've got something bubbling in the back of your mind there. <laughs> No, no, no. I agree with John. I mean, look, the more you travel, the better you become as a person because you can then relate to what other people around the world think of us as Americans. Okay. And also how to be humble with, you know, having a fantastic car and a house where people live in a little wooden hut and have no house and just have sticks and rocks and no TV and not a cell phone. Uh, you know, like the Papuan, you know, headhunter guys. So I, I recommend people travel, travel as much as you can, be safe, be careful, and travel with friends and people that you like. And I agree with John, do not, if you're a photographer, do not travel with people that think that taking two photos and you're moving on is the end. Because <laughs> when you travel with photographers, you can stand there for 20, 30, 40, 50, an hour, and then everybody's ready, you move on. But travel, travel, travel.
Got it. Got it. John, any, any final thoughts where we could find your book maybe when it's, when it's released? It's, it's on presale now on amazon.com. Just type in Vietnam today powers. Um, there's another book with that, but just put my last name in there powers and it'll pop up. Um, so, but that, yeah, that's enough on that. I opened up with a quote from Mark Twain. Let me close with a quote from Susan Heller. I love this quote. Uh, in preparing for your travels, lay out your clothes, all your clothes, and lay out your money. Take half the clothes and twice the money. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. preparing for travel photography. <laughs> that's that's perfect. That's perfect. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw a quick link in the chat because I found your I found your book there. It's the one with the uh, like the young girl on the front. I can yeah, yeah by John Harris. That's yeah. Cool pop up in northern vietnam by the chinese border awesome awesome that's beautiful that's beautiful well thank you guys for coming here for sharing all this information for spending your hour with us thank you to the guests who have come in to listen to us rant and banter and <laughs> talk back and forth <laughs> um this could certainly go on for many hours but you know yeah. We that, haven't even that, touched on things I want uh, to talk about. <laughs> well, you know what, though? That's great because, you know, we're going to be doing this every month. And as we go forward, there's no reason that we can't have, you know, have you back, have Peter back. Pete's going to be here because he's so quiet. He just sits there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, take it all in. It's yeah, yeah. Be a listener. So we will be adding to this. And for those of you who are listening, again, thank you for being here. If you have suggestions, topics that you would like us to cover, uh, no criticisms. We don't want any negativity, just only positive things. No, no <laughs> get, tell me what you need. Uh, you can email me at troy at ieppv.com and we and my board and the panel will sit down and, and we'll, we'll talk about what topics we can best feed you. So again, thank everybody for being here. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Good night. Cheers. Thank you.